Today, a breakthrough therapy designation in kidney cancer, regulatory submissions in lung cancer and soft tissue sarcoma, and promising results in carcinoid syndrome. Hello and welcome to OncLive News Network, I'm Laura Jones. The FDA granted the VEGF-targeted therapy linvatinib a breakthrough therapy designation in renal cell carcinoma. The decision was based on findings from the open-label three-arm phase two study in which linvatinib monotherapy improved progression-free survival by 39% versus everolimus in patients with advanced clear cell RCC who had received prior VEGF therapy. The study also showed that the combination of the two agents improved PFS by 60% versus everolimus alone. According to a statement from developer ASI, an updated analysis of trial data suggested an overall survival benefit with the combination versus single agent everolimus. Linvatinib is currently approved as a treatment for patients with advanced thyroid cancer and is being studied in other tumor types. Clovis Oncology announced it had completed a new drug application for its lung cancer drug, rosalitinib. The FDA filing is for the treatment of patients with non-small cell lung cancer who have developed resistance to EGFR therapy and tested positive for the T790M mutation, which develops in approximately 60% of patients following EGFR therapy. The NDA for this third-generation TKI was based on data from the ongoing TIGER-X trial. The study showed a 60% improvement in objective response rate with the 500 milligram dose of rosalitinib in patients with T790M mutant disease. A marketing authorization application has also been submitted to the European Medicines Agency for the same population. In this next segment, Dr. Mark Szynski of the University of Pittsburgh provides insight into why third-generation agents may have less toxicity. The difference uh, with regard to the third-generation drugs is that they uh, are more specific for mutant EGFR in relatively spare wild-type EGFR, where that is not true of the first and second generation. Um, it, agents which will inhibit mutant EGFR but also will inhibit wild type and may account for uh, the typical tax toxicities of rash and diarrhea. Go to our website to see more of this interview. The European Commission approved the combination of pertuzumab, trastuzumab, and chemotherapy as a neoadjuvant therapy for adult patients with HER2 positive, locally advanced inflammatory or early stage breast cancer who are at high risk of recurrence. The decision was based on an improvement in pathological complete response with the triplet compared with other regimens in the Phase II Neosphere trial. This marks the first approval based on this endpoint by the EC. In a five-year analysis of the Phase II study presented at the 2015 ASCO annual meeting, the PCR rate was 39.3% for the pertuzumab regimen compared with 21.5% with the trastuzumab and chemotherapy alone. ASI announced that it had submitted an FDA application for aribulin mesylate as a treatment for patients with soft tissue sarcoma. Findings from the Phase 3 Open Label Study 309 trial showed a two-month overall survival improvement compared with decarbazine for patients with soft tissue sarcoma who progressed following standard therapies. OncLive recently spoke with Dr. Robin Jones of the Royal Marston Hospital in London about the significance of a survival benefit in this population. This trial randomized patients to receive either aribulin or decarbazine. The results have shown an improvement in median overall survival for patients treated with aribulin. The median overall survival for patients in the aribulin arm was 13.5 months compared to 11.5 months in the decarbazine arm. This is a statistically significant improvement. Even though it's two months, it's a big step forward for patients with soft tissue sarcoma. Regulatory filings for aribulin have been submitted to the European Medicines Agency and the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare in Japan. Some good news for patients with carcinoid syndrome, which is characterized by severe diarrhea and flushing episodes. 
Lexicon Pharmaceuticals released top-line results from the Phase 3 Telostar trial, which showed a benefit with the oral agent telotrostat ediprit in patients with carcinoid syndrome whose symptoms are not adequately controlled by the current standard of care. When added to background therapy with a somatostatin analog, the 250 milligram dose reduced the average number of bowel movements by 29% compared with baseline. In the 500 milligram arm, there was a 35% reduction. This was compared with a 17% reduction with placebo. This past week, Physicians Education Resource held its 16th annual International Lung Cancer Congress in Huntington Beach, California, with a record number of attendees. The meeting focused on hot topics in lung cancer care, specifically immuno-oncology and targeted therapies. Onclive was there speaking with leaders in the lung cancer field, including Dr. Paul Bunn of the University of Colorado. In this next clip, Dr. Bunn shares his thoughts on the future role of combination therapies in lung cancer. Here we are a long time later and we have all these tyrosine kinases that are specific for specific types of cancer and they have very high response rates, 60-70% which is higher than the chemos that ended up curing people before, uh, higher than that, but they don't cure anybody. So why, why don't we have combinations? It doesn't matter whether it's Hodgkin's disease or TB or HIV or hepatitis C. Basically, you need combinations to cure the disease because if you don't get rid of all, all the cells, soon you'll get resistance. Visit Onclive.com for more coverage of this great event. And that'll do it for today. Thanks so much for watching Onclive News Network. I'm Laura Jones, we'll see you next time.